Chapter Twenty Eight of the Legends and Myths of Hawaii. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. The Legends and Myths of Hawaii by King David Kahakua. The Story of Laikaui, Part One. A Supernatural Folklore Legend of the Fourteenth Century. Prefatory. Early in the spring of eighteen eighty five, a party of six or eight ladies and gentlemen, the writer being of the number, made a carriage circuit of the island of Oahu ample preparations for the little journey had been made by the governor of the island and the marshal of the kingdom acted in the double capacity of guide and escort a score of attending natives accompanied the party on horseback and a delightful week or more was consumed in skirting the breezy beaches of kulau in dalliance at wailua in visiting historic points of interest and in completing a journey of something less than one hundred miles starting from honolulu the empty carriages were carefully lowered down the steep ragged and narrow pali road leading to the valleys below and the first evening found us at rest by the beautiful shores of kaniote entering the district of kulaloa the next day and approaching the coast over a broad stretch of grassy meadow but slightly above the level of the ocean our party was suddenly brought to a halt beside a pool of clear water nearly round and perhaps a hundred feet in diameter the surface of the pool was ten or twelve feet below the level of the surrounding plain and its even banks of solid rock dropped almost perpendicularly into water of unknown depth the volume of the pool is affected neither by rain nor drought and the native belief is that it is fed by springs at the bottom and has a subterranean drainage to the ocean some two or three miles distant this we learned was the celebrated pond of waipuka around which so many strange legends have been woven all of them speak of a cavern somewhere beyond the walls of the pool and to be reached only by diving into the water and finding the narrow passage leading up into it while listening to fragments of the story of leikawi and other legends connected with the mysterious cavern and seriously doubting the existence of the secret chamber so prominently referred to in the early folklore of oahu an old native who had joined the party at kanihoe quietly and without a word dismounted divested himself of his upper garments and plunged into the pool swimming to the northern wall he clung for a moment to a slight projection and then disappeared it was suggested for the first time that he was in search of the cavern of leikawi and all eyes were turned towards the point where he was last seen above the water three or four minutes elapsed and fears for his safety began to be exchanged when the salutation of aloha greeted us from the opposite wall and the next moment a pair of black eyes was seen glistening through a small opening into the cavern not before observed about four feet above the surface of the water the swimmer then returned to the pool by the passage through which he had left it and we were compelled to admit that the cavern of leikawi was a reality however wild and visionary may have been the stories connected with it not a single person present including the governor had ever before seen the passage to the cavern attempted 
and the natives were overjoyed at what they had witnessed to the many questions with which he was pressed the old man returned but brief answers on his return and when importuned to explain the method of his entrance to the cavern that the secret might not be lost he pointed significantly to the sea and declared that there would be found the bodies of those who sought to solve the mystery of the passage and failed this rediscovery of the entrance to the cavern of leikawi created a renewed interest in the legends associated with it and thenceforth during our journey many of the old stories were rehearsed the most interesting related to laikawi it is a recklessly fanciful recital and gives expression to the extravagant conceits of the early hawaiian bards following is presented a condensation of the legend of laikawi as more elaborately told by halao editor one the father of laikawi was kahukopaka chief of the two kalu districts comprising the entire windward side of the island of oahu and her mother's name was malikahana soon after their marriage he made a vow that if her children should prove to be girls they were to be put to death at least until a son should be born to them in accordance with this savage vow the first four of malikahana's children all being daughters were slain without mercy when her time again drew near by the advice of a priest she sent her husband to the coast to bring her some ohuna palmao a small fish of which she was exceedingly fond in his absence she was delivered of twin girls who were named laikawai and laikohoi they were surpassingly beautiful children and desirous of saving their lives the mother consigned the first name to the care of waka the child's grandmother and the other to kapi kai Koa, a priest of discretion and sanctity on the return of the husband he was told that the expected child came into the world without life he knew that a birth in his house had occurred during his absence for he had heard two distinct claps of thunder waka took her foster child to the cavern which opens into the pond of waipuka and which can be entered only by diving laihohi was taken by her priestly protector to the sacred enclosure of kukanloko on the western side of the island and there tenderly cared for the moment waka entered the cavern of waipuka and laikawai a rainbow appeared over the place and was constantly visible so long as the child remained there even when the sun was obscured by clouds the rainbow could be seen at length the rainbow was observed by the great prophet hulu manani -e, on the distant island of Kauai. for twenty days in succession he saw it and knew its significance he secured a canoe and fifteen men from polau la the chief of wailua provided himself with a black pig white fowl and red fish for sacrifice and when the star sirius rose set sail for oahu reaching that island he landed at wainai and guided by the rainbow in due time arrived at the pool of waipuka waka had just dived into the cave and he noticed ripples on the water during the day waka started to leave the cavern but caught a glimpse of the prophet sitting on the bank and quickly returned again ruffling the water the prophet remained by the pool all night and in the morning saw a rainbow over kukanli loko traveling in that direction he ascended mount kala 
when he saw the rainbow over the island of molokai finding a canoe bound thither he took passage and landed at halilono near the western shore in a dream waka had been directed by kapilaikoho to remove laikaui to some secure place and had accordingly taken her to maliliwa a secluded spot on the north side of molokai following the rainbow the prophet arrived in the evening at waikulo just below maliliwa but that night waka was again advised in a dream to remove at once to the island of hawaii and dwell with her ward at pai lui they departed at dawn and kiwanui met a man getting his canoe ready to sail to lanai and engaged passage but before they could embark laikawai accidentally removed the veil which waka compelled her to wear and the man was amazed at her beauty instead of starting for lanai he invited waka and her ward to remain at his house until he could secure the services of another rower and then started around the island proclaiming to every group of people the great beauty of laikawai a great crowd had assembled at kalapupapa to witness a boxing match and there the man extolled the beauty of the girl in the presence of the head chief and prophet in search of her no doubting that the girl described was the one he was in quest of the prophet proceeded to kalia and saw the rainbow over Hauanui. that night he arrived at kamola the land adjoining and went to rest for he had journeyed far and was weary meanwhile waka again warned in a dream obtained a canoe and sailed across the channel to lanai landing at maule three days of fog and rain followed and on the fourth the prophet saw the rainbow over maule it did not remain there however ten days later he discerned something peculiar on the high peak of haliaka on the island of maui he proceeded thither but found nothing there but fog and rain he next journeyed to kawiki a hill near hana and there erected a small hiu or temple for the worship of his patron deity after the dedication seeing nothing on hawaii and receiving no inspiration he remained for some time at kawiki at length in the early days of the seventh month of the year he saw faintly with the rising of the sun a rainbow on the windward side of hawaii at sunset on the third day of the next month he entered his heiau and prayed feverently and there appeared before him the race of waka and laikaui his patron god then informed him that the persons whose shadows he had seen were living in the forest of puna in a house thatched with the yellow feathers of the oo with this information the prophet set sail for mahukona on the island of hawaii there he prayed in the temple of pahuna and was directed to waipio where he offered sacrifices in the famous hiu of Pakalana. he proceeded thence to kaiwihalai near lopahuhu where he remained for some years unable to obtain any further information of the persons of whom he was in search two it was during the sojourn of hula maniani the prophet of kaiwihalai that kawahili king of Kauai, with his queen kaili kikoa returned from a wedding tour of the group 
a great assemblage of chiefs and commoners had met to welcome them home with music dancing and other festivities in relating his adventures the king referred to a meeting with the mysterious princess of Palului, whose beauty he declared was something more than human the meeting occurred at kiao in puna the kahu of the king first met the princess and her companion and when requested by him to favor his royal master with a visit the princess informed him that she might possibly comply with his request the night following if i come she said i will give you warning now listen and heed she continued if you hear the voice of the ao i am not in its notes and when you hear the caw of the ala ala i am not in its voice when the notes of the el pato are heard i am getting ready to descend when you hear the song of the apa pain i shall have come out of my house listen then and if you hear the iwipilina singing i am outside of your house come forth and meet me and so it came to pass the kihi or first watch of the evening resounded the cry of the ao in the second watch the ka of the alahala at midnight the chirping of the el pio in the pili of the morning the song of the apapani and at daybreak the voice of the iwipolena then a shadow fell on the door and we were enveloped said the king in a thick fog and when it cleared away the princess was seen in her glorious beauty borne on the wings of birds the name of the divine being he said was lei kawai among the chiefs who listened to this story of the king was a wo e kapua chief of wailea who was of foreign birth he made a vow that he would not marry a hawaiian woman and expressing the opinion that the princess described by the king was a daughter of other lands he resolved to make her his wife to this end he sought the late cow of the king and made him his confidant and chief officer they talked of little else than laikawai he had a vision of her in a dream and drank awa successfully for many days in the hope of inspiring a repetition of the vision he chanted a melee in praise of the unknown princess renewed his resolution to possess her and then prepared to go to hawaii in search of her he fitted out two double canoes with sixteen rowers and two sternsmen and when the augurs and soothsayers declared the omens favorable on the rising of cirrus he set sail for hawaii on his way thither he stopped at many places and at length arrived in the harbor of hanu in the district of hana maui a number of surf riders were amusing themselves on the beach among them hina kama alama the famous chiefess of hana awo was smitten with her charms and accepted her invitation to join the bathing party in their sports in turn she became enamored of him and invited him to visit her house and play kon an a game resembling draughts with her when about to begin the game she asked him what he was willing to wager on his success and he pointed to one of his double canoes she declined the condition and proposed instead that they should stake their persons to this he agreed and playing lost the game to avoid paying the forfeit he declared that he had made a vow to give himself in love to no woman until after he had made the circuit 
of the island of hawaii and admonished her to remain faithful to him while he was absent the chief and his party left hanu and the next day arrived at kaahua in the district of kohala hawaii where a boxing match was in progress Iwokikupua was challenged to a contest by ihanu the champion of kohala the challenge was accepted and in the struggle ihanu was killed they next landed at pauhau in hamakau to witness another boxing match the local champion was haukana he was invited to a contest with Iwokipua, but learning something of the prowess of the chief he declined the conflict they then sailed for laupakohoho where the prophet humanani was still residing that evening the prophet was watching the clouds for omens and discerned in them that a chief's double canoe was approaching bearing nineteen men the next morning he saw a mist on the sea and prepared his black pig white fowl and bunch of awa then followed peals of thunder and iwokapua's canoes came in sight with the pulaulau insignia of a chief whereupon the prophet offered sacrifices and prayed for the chief and himself landing the chief and the prophet embraced and spent the night together but iwokapua did not disclose the real object of his voyage they then sailed for makahanaloa from which place could be seen the rainbow over palui they landed at kiu where the people were surf bathing in the evening iwokapua left his men with the canoes taking with him only his confidant the kahu carrying a rich feather mantle as a present to the lady of palui after a long and wearisome journey through the thick jungle they heard the crowing of a cock and soon after came to a clearing at the farther end of which was the house of leikawai all covered with the choice yellow feathers of the oo iwokapua was amazed and humiliated said he i brought my royal feather cloak as a present to her and behold it is not equal to the thatch of her house then turning to his cow he said i will stay here no longer let us return in spite of the remonstrances of his companion iwokapua returned to kio without seeing lai kawai and sailed at once for Kauai. they did not stop to visit the prophet at laupakohoho when off the coast of hamakua they saw a woman of extraordinary beauty reclining on a cliff by the shore she was graceful in every movement and wore a snow-white mantle they landed and made her acquaintance her name was poahu of mauna kea as usual the chief began to talk to her at once of love in reply she asked him if he had not sworn by the names of the gods not to marry a woman born on the hawaiian group and whether he had not engaged himself to hina kamalama of hana she informed him that like himself she too was a kupa descendant and possessed supernatural powers she promised to marry him however so soon as he could be released from his oath and would return to claim her she accompanied them as far as kohala where she exchanged mantles with the chief in pledge of their betrothal and then took her departure crossing the channel to maui the chief put into the harbor of hanu but did not land hina kamalama hailed him from the shore 
and demanded the fulfillment of his promise but he beguiled her by declaring that he had not yet completed the circuit of hawaii having sailed only along the windward side of it and that bad news from home compelled his immediate return to Kauai. she believed him and was pacified in the middle of the oahu channel he enjoyed secrecy on his crew and then hastened to Kauai, fully determined to return to hawaii and secure an audience with the princess of palui reaching home he informed his five sisters of what he had seen at palui and they agreed to accompany him to hawaii and assist him in his suit with the beautiful laikawai the next day iwokapua selected a fresh crew of fourteen rowers and two pilots who with his sisters and confidential counsellor made a party of twenty-three in all and set sail for hawaii they were detained a month at honolua maui by stormy weather but finally reached kalikuhulu in the district of kona hawaii polahau saw their canoes there and was disappointed when they left for hilo they arrived at kiu in puna about the middle of the day and iwokapua made his arrangements and started inland at once with his five sisters and trusted kahu at midnight the party reached palui the chief stationed his eldest sister maile hawal at the door of laikawai she sent forth the delicate fragrance of the plant of her name which awoke laikawai waka waka exclaimed the princess here answered waka what wakes you in the night a fragrance a strange cool fragrance which goes to my heart returned the girl it is not a strange fragrance said waka it is certainly male high well the sweet scented sister of iwokapua who has come to ask you to be his wife pshaw i will not marry him was the petulant response of laikawai iwokapua heard her refusal and was so thoroughly disheartened that he proposed to abandon his sisters and return to kiu but his trusty kahu intervened and advised another trial so the next in age my kaluhi took a position at the door her fragrance was different and more penetrating but nearly the same exchange of words as before occurred within the house the chief again proposed to leave but the kahu insisted on trying the powers of mali laui but no better success followed try again said the counsellor and if they all fail i myself will undertake to persuade her so mali pakaha was sent to the door but with no better result and speaking loudly enough to be heard without laikawai said whoever may come i will not consent to marry iwokapua hearing this and regarding any further attempt as useless iwokapua ordered his sisters to remain behind in the woods as a punishment for their failure and started on his return to the coast the youngest sister whose powers had not been tried called after him and touched his heart he offered to take her and leave the rest behind but she would not consent to abandon her sisters one of them chanted a melee to soften his heart but he remained obdurate he proceeded to the coast the sisters following as best as they could and when they saw him and his attendants seated in the canoes and ready for departure mali kahui chanted a touching melee but he heeded it not and put out to sea 
the sisters traveled by land and met aiwakapua as he was about to go ashore at punahua but he avoided them by again setting sail they then traveled overland to honolii where their brother had stopped for supplies they watched during the night and when aiwakapua went to embark in the morning his sisters drew near and kahalamopuana chanted a pathetic song and with so great effort that her brother invited her into his canoe placed her on his knee and wept over her ordering his rowers to pull out to sea with his youngest sister whom he still held in his embrace she begged him to return for the others and when he refused she chanted a farewell song leapt overboard and swam ashore the sisters then decided to return to paului scarcely knowing where else to go on the island of hawaii where they were strangers arriving there they found shelter in a clump of hala trees near the house of laikawai the doors of which were kept continually closed failing to attract the attention of the inmates the sisters concluded to keep the fire burning at night and to sing by turns mali hawaii the first night mali kahulia the second and so on for four nights but no notice was taken of them on the fifth night it was the turn of the youngest sister to sing she lighted the fire made a musical instrument of a tea leaf and played upon it she did this in the evening and morning watches for two nights laikawai had never heard the instrument before and it delighted her so she sent her kahu a hunchback to first spy out the musician and then bring before her the person who was capable of making such music following the kahu kahalaomapana found laikawai resting on the wings of birds with two iwipolenas perched upon her shoulders she was kindly received played before her and told her of her sisters touched by the recital laikawai ordered a house to be built for them and formally adopted them as her companions and guards they were fed by birds and lived as an enchanted bower on the return to Kauai of aiwakapaya from his second voyage he had a great feast prepared and all the guests were made drunk on awa under the influence of the liquor aiwakapaya divulged the secret of his mission to hawaii and told all about his unsuccessful efforts in seeking to secure an interview with the princess of palui how Iliiki, a handsome young chief of mana rose to his feet and boasted that he could achieve without difficulty what ali kokapa had failed to accomplish whereupon the latter offered to furnish him with a canoe and men to sail it if he would undertake to make good his boast and make a wager of his lands on the result Hawi laiki set sail for hawaii the next day and on his arrival at kiu was greatly admired for his manly beauty the following morning a dense fog enveloped the place and when it cleared away he saw seven women sitting by the seaside one of whom was laikawi to attract her attention hawiliki for four successive days appeared before her in the surf performing many difficult feats of swimming and diving but she gave him no heed on the fifth day he exhibited his skill in surf swimming and won applause from all but laikawi he then showed himself as a surf swimmer without a board his skill was then recognized by laikawi 
and she beckoned him to approach and threw around his neck a lay lehuna or garland of lehua blossoms immediately the fog settled down and when it cleared laikawai and her party had left for palui hawaiki and his guide determined to follow the party at once and traveling all night they reached palui in the morning approaching the house they were met by mali haliwal the first sentinel who ordered them to retire but they passed her by force as they did the second third and fourth guards until they met kala laopaua near the door of the house resting on the wings of birds she ordered them back threatening that the birds should pick their bones and they returned in haste to kiu undecided what course to pursue how iki dreamed of meeting laikawi several nights in succession and at last resolved to visit Paoli again and without an attendant reaching the spot he approached the house by a back path without encountering the sentinels and found kahalaupauana asleep at the door he pushed aside the feather curtain entered the room and found laikawai asleep resting on the wings of birds he awoke her and she ordered him away he pleaded with her and told her of his dreams but she insisted upon his departure kala lapuna then came to the assistance of her mistress and drove the importunate suitor back to kiu abandoning an undertaking as hopeless haluliki returned to Kauai. arriving at wailua he was welcomed by a large gathering of chiefs and when he had told his story aliwulukua generously forgave him his wager rejoiced to learn that his sisters had become the attendants of laikawi Iwokapua resolved to revisit Pali. He assembled a fleet of twenty double and thirty single canoes, forty peleleas for his attendants, and a triple canoe for himself and counselor, and set sail for Hawaii. Waka knew of the arrival of the fleet at Kiu, and admonished Laikawai not to visit the coast the sisters were put on guard and kalalaiopauna summoned to their defense their terrible patron god ki hana lu moku Ambu, or gigantic lizard the night following these preparations Iwokapua and his guide made their appearance at palui five taboo sticks covered with white kappa had been set at intervals beyond the house but the invaders disregarded them and pushed on until they encountered mali Halwal, the first sentinel she ordered them to retire and sent a bird to summon the rest of her sisters the youngest came borne on the wings of birds and drove her brother back telling him that they were no longer sisters of his i woe ki Puka returned to Kiu, resolved to secure by force what he had been unable to effect by strategy. He therefore sent up to Palui a detachment of ten warriors, but they were promptly slain by the lizard god. After waiting for two days, he sent another detachment of twenty warriors with a competent officer, and all of them shared the same fate. He next sent forty men, and still other forties, until eight forties in all had perished. He next dispatched his two swift messengers to inquire about the fate of his warriors. They met a bird-catcher above Ola, who told them of the moo and his dreadful work. Presently they heard the roaring of the wind and the crash of falling trees, 
and the monster appeared in the path before them. They reassumed their bird forms, however, and escaped by flying. Aliwokupua then summoned Kalahumoku, the man-eating dog from Kahiki, to kill the moo and bring to him Laikawai, and with the dog he sent his two bird messengers to bring him early tidings of the result. As the two monsters met, a column of fog rose and drifted toward the sea. This warned Aiwakupua that the dog had been defeated. Late in the day the animal returned, badly wounded and with ears and tail missing, and the whole party set sail for Kauai. Arriving home, Aiwakupua thought of his engagement with the beautiful Poihau and began to perform certain expiatory rites to relieve himself of the oath he had taken not to marry a woman of the Hawaiian Islands. He then sent his two bird messengers to Poihu to inform her that he was preparing to fulfill his engagement. By mistake, the birds flew to Hana. They inquired for the betrothed of the Kauai chief, and were directed to Hinakamalama. They informed her that three months were to be spent in preparation, and that in the fourth month, in the night of Kalu, Aiwukupu would come to claim his bride. These were the words they had been instructed to speak to Polikahu, but by mistake they were told to another who joyously replied he remembers then the game of kone which we played together on the return of the bird messengers the blunder was discovered and they were banished from the court then the koe or tropic bird was sent to polehu with the same message with which the others had been entrusted i wokupua relieved of his oath, waited until the twenty-fourth day of the third month, and then set sail in great state, with forty double and eighty single canoes, and twenty pelus. On the eleventh day of the fourth month, he arrived at Kawahi, and dispatched the Kau to inform Polihu, who named Wailula as the place for the marriage. To give brilliancy to the ceremony, Alikupawa dressed his petty chiefs, male and female, in feather cloaks, and many of his female attendants in fine mats. He wore the white mantle given to him by Polihu and a red feather helmet. His rowers were clad in fine red kappas. On the platform of the chief's double canoe, was raised an anu covered with yellow cloaks and above it stood the tabu polulu around this canoe were ten others carrying musicians skilled in playing the hula drum and other instruments on the day of kulu the three great mountains were covered with snow which was the sign promised by polihu on the arrival of Alawakupua and his party at Wailuha, they were met by Polihu, Linohi, Wailu, and Kahupakane, the three latter being mountain goddesses. The men suffered from cold, but on being apprised of the fact, Polihu and her friends removed their snow mantles causing the snow on the mountains to retire to its usual limits. Ali Wokapua and Polihau were then made man and wife. Feasting and music followed, and the happy pair returned together to Kauai, making their residence above Honupuwai. In revenge for their dismissal, the banished bird messengers informed Hika Kamalama Lama of the marriage of her betrothed angered at his perfidy she persuaded her parents to make a visit with her to Kauai. 
there was a gathering of chiefs at mana Kauai to celebrate the nuptials of halakaiki and makawi the night was spent in games dancing and other pastimes a game of kilu was in progress at midnight hina ikama lama entered the kilu shed and sat down among the circle of players observing her kaluliki requested the mea um drawer to tell ailukupua to stop the hula kei and take part in the game of kilu in order to enable him to make her his prize accordingly when haluliki won the game the mayu um went around the circle and threw the mali wreath over him the wreath was then removed and placed over the shoulders of hina kamalama she rose to her feet and requested permission to speak she asked in whose honor the festival was being given and on being informed of the occasion requested hawaliki to delay the fulfillment of the um and then proceed to tell her story of the faithfulness of aliwakupua the story created a great sensation and the conduct of Ali Kupua was universally condemned. Polihu was enraged and returned to Mauakea, and the chief agreed to fulfill his engagement with Hina Kamalama. The night of their marriage, Polihu sent the chill of her snow mantle upon her rival, and she was benumbed with cold. Her teeth chattered and it was with difficulty that she could be kept from freezing. A second time, when she and Iwakupua came together, an intense chill came over her. She was frightened and inquired the cause. The chief answered, The cold is sent by your rival. Betake you at once to a fire, that you may not perish. The next day at noon they met as had previously arranged polihu put on her sun mantle and a scorching heat almost consumed her rival again they met but were unable to remain together and hina kamalama unceremoniously left Kauai, without even touching noses with aiwakupua before she left for maui however a kilu game was arranged at pua pai and hauliki still mindful of his success at mana endeavored to secure the fruits of his victory but hina kamalama refused to yield unless the victor would come to hana in proper state and formally make her his wife during the game polihu and her companions appeared in glittering robes of snow and chilled the assemblage and the next morning they returned to mauna kea where hina kamalama set sail for hana end of chapter twenty eight recording by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c